Hey, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. We are here with 15 minutes with the captains. My name is Captain Ashanel, and today my reader is... Soldier Ashbro. Right, today we're going to go into control your speech. So we're going to open up with Matthew chapter 12. Read verse 35. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So out of out of the mind brings good things. Out of an evil heart brings evil things. Do done. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So every idle word that comes out of our mouths, we shall give account for in the day of judgment. That's the warning to all of us. Every word that comes out, we're going to have to give account for. So let's jump to Sirach now. <laughs> Sirach chapter 37. And let's start at verse 18. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37 and verse 18. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death, but a tongue ruleth over them continually. So, four manner of things appear, which are what? Good and evil, life and death. So, out of the tongue, we get good, evil, life, death, but what? But the tongue ruleth over them continually. So this is why it's important to control speech, because out of your speech can come one of these four things, good, evil, life, or death. Now, some people like to, you know, just run their mouths without thinking about what they're saying, but it's very important that you understand the consequences of what you say. They could be devastating if you get it wrong. That's why we say in control your speech. The scriptures go into many um, examples of where speech went wrong. Bad speech went wrong. Now, let's go to um, Proverbs 11. It's important we control our speech, brothers and sisters. Now, um, let's go to Proverbs 11 and let us read verse... Twelve. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 12. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. So read that one more time. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. So a man of understanding is always going to hold his peace. You understand? He's not going to despise his neighbor. He's going to sit back control his mouth and observe. That's what a wise man is going to do. He's going to observe and not run his mouth and get himself a problem. Read the next verse. Verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So a talebearer, a gossiper, murmurer, is going to reveal your secrets, but he that is of a faithful, loyal spirit concealeth the matter so again speech very important when you read this someone who um can control their speech will display the attribute of being loyal do you understand faithful and loyal why because they can control what they say and they're not going to reveal your secrets do you understand if you're someone who can't control your mouth the likelihood is you're going to reveal secrets so now from there we're going to jump to um let's see let's see if there's any more here speed mm -mm -mm. verse um 17 verse 17 the merciful man doeth good to his own soul but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh so you have reckless speech you're going to result in troubling your own flesh. That's all that's going to happen. Your own spirit, your own body, your own life is going to be affected by your mouth. So that's why it's important to control your speech, brothers and sisters. Read on. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Read it one more time. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Read on. As righteousness tendeth to life, 
So he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. And that's what we need to be mindful of. Your speech can lead to, well, evil, and the result of that could lead to your own death. You understand? So when we say control your speech, the scriptures show you that reckless speech can lead to death, evil and death. So it's very essential that you learn. If you don't already know how to, you learn how to control your tongue. Now, Proverbs, um, let's stay in Proverbs 15. Read the first verse. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So, having a very sweet speech or soft tongue can diffuse situations, you know. Um, some people like to use the word de-escalate. You know, a soft answer can de-escalate a potential um, hazardous situation into a resolved situation. Do you understand why? Because a soft answer can turn away wrath, anger. Keep going. Verse 2. No, but grievous. But grievous words stir up anger. Now, if you're someone who cannot control your speech, your grievous words, you're only going to escalate the situation. So it's important that we learn how to apply the soft answer approach rather than the grievous words approach. It's not going to work. It will not work. Read on. Verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pureth out foolishness. Now, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. You understand? So, the tongue of the wise man is going to use knowledge right. So, the knowledge is going to use, well, it's going into the laws of the Most High. The knowledge is the laws according to Malachi. Get that. Let's explain what the knowledge is. So a wise man is going to use knowledge. Out of his mouth is going to come knowledge. Malachi 2. Um, two. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the law should always be coming out of the mouth. Out of the tongue, off the tongue should be knowledge. So go back to um, Proverbs 15. Read verse 2 again. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. So the tongue of the wise is going to be speaking the laws in the right way. It's going to be using it for edification. Keep going. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. So the mouth of fools is going to pour out foolishness. If you're a reckless speaker, your tongue is reckless, you are going to pour out foolishness. That's something you need to understand. If you're a reckless speaker, you're going to pour out foolishness. So, um, so from there, from there, we're going to jump to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to jump to Proverbs chapter 18. Let's read verse um, 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. So the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. You think about you going to a swimming pool, for example and you go into the deep end of a swimming pool, that's not a good thing. Not a good thing sometimes. Keep going. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. So the wellspring, you think of a spring, and the spring's overflowing. You know, you get a spring and the water's just kind of overflowing. Like, let's say you have, um, uh, 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 what's it called? A tap, a sink, a sink, and the water's, the water's overflowing. You know, imagine that water overflowing was wisdom. That's a beautiful thing to see. Like a flowing brook. Keep going. Verse 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Read the next verse. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. So read that one more time. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Now, a fool's lips, a reckless speaker, a reckless speaker is going to enter into contention all they're going to do is go back and forth back and forth back and forth you know whether you're you're out i'm in the street in a congregation amongst family you name it the environment whatever it is a reckless mouth is going to enter into contention that's all they know going back and forth 
Um, what does it say? And its mouth calleth for strokes. Now, this is where the physical side kicks in. You know? Your mouth is going to get you beaten, basically. You're going to get your, your behind whooped. You understand? That's all that's going to happen. You're going to get your behind whooped. Read on. A fool's mouth is his destruction. You see, a fool's mouth is his destruction. So you can't control your speech. It's going to lead to your downfall. Your destruction is going to be based on your big mouth. Read on. And his lips are the snare of his soul. And that's going to be what traps you up. That's what's going to be what traps you up. Your big mouth, your reckless speaking is what traps you up. So that's why we read in Proverbs 15, take the soft answer approach. Learn, train yourself to take the soft answer approach. Uh, any more on that? Verse 8. Yep. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Read that again. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. To the words of a talebearer, a gossiper, they're like wounds. Keep going. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And they go all the way down in through your belly. Now, it's not good. Hearing that gossip, you know, first-hand information, second-hand information, third-hand information, it's just, it just gets worse as it goes along the line. You know, and you don't want to be the one who started it or is in the midst of it. That's why it's essential you learn to control your speech. Now, from there, jump to Proverbs um, 20. Read verse um, 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. So you've got gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. So you're talking about your lips of knowledge, the, what comes out of your mouth, your wisdom, your speech is like, um, it's, it's a special priceless commodity. That's what it's like. You know, it's precious. You have to dig deep. You can only go to certain, it's like you're looking for um, a particular type of stone. You can only go to certain countries in the world, certain lands to dig and find and extract that terp certain type of stone. The same way it is with um, um, that sweet speech and knowledge. You know, it's a precious, precious thing to have. Not impossible to get, but it's precious to have. Now, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. read verse 19. Verse 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So don't get involved with someone who's rolling around talebearing, gossiping, murmuring, and they're trying to sweet talk you into things. You know, that deceitful speech. Don't get yourself involved in that. Stay away. Run for the hills, in fact. Um, next verse. Verse 20. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Now, this is a warning, not only to you children out there, you young kids, but also to you grown folk. You know, your speech, we, we, we sometimes disagree with our parents. They say things, they frustrate us sometimes, but they're still our parents. So, read that again. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You see, that's what's going to happen. Your knowledge and understanding is going to be put out. Why? Because you've broken the law of obeying your parents. You've got to respect and obey your father and your mother. So that, again, comes with you controlling your mouth, learning how to control your mouth. Right, from there, let's jump um, to Sirach, um 27. Let's head to Sirach 27. And the book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 4. As when one sifteth with a sieve, the refuse remaineth, so the life of man in his talk. Read it one more time. As when one sifteth with a sieve, the refuse remaineth, so the filth of man in his talk. So as one sifteth with a sieve, you know, you can sift with a sieve and all the water and liquid come out the bottom, and the filth 
remains in sight. It says, um, do, 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 sorry, the refuse remaineth in sight. It says the same as the filth of a man in his talk. Now, so you can sift through someone's, um, what's the word I want to use? Someone's um, garbage that comes out of their mouth. You can sift through it. You can sift through their conversation and find the garbage within there. You understand? So read it one more time. As when one sifteth with a sieve, the refuse remaineth. So the filth of man in his talk. So we, we can see, we'll, you know, a spiritual man will be able to see when garbage is coming out of someone's mouth. They'll be able to discern the, um, the good from the bad. You understand? It's the same way you can, you know, shake a, a sieve and you'll see, you know, the refuse remain and all the, the, the liquid disappear. Now, um, mm -mm, stay in Sirach, jump to 28, read verse 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 13. Curse the whisperer and double-tongued, for such have destroyed many that were at peace. So curse the whisperer and the double-tongued, for such has destroyed many that were at peace. So the um, whisperer, the gossiper, the murmurer can destroy peaceful people. You understand? They're like a, like a, what's it called? A poison, like a virus, mm -hmm. like a bacteria that just goes around infecting people. Um, read on. Verse 14. A backbiting tongue have disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities have it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. So a backbiting tongue has dis, um, disqualified or disqui sorry, disquieted many. A backbiting tongue has disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities have been pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. So the tongue, like we read back in um, um, Surak 37, has the ability to, to really destroy. can bring life, death, good and evil. You understand? So it's driven men from place to place, a backbiting tongue. Keep going. Verse 15. A backbiting tongue have cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labours. So you Proverbs 31 sisters, a backbiting tongue has destroyed a lot of you. And it can continue to destroy a lot of you. You understand? That's how powerful the tongue is. And it's destroyed your labours. You understand? Alright. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Read on, read on, read on. Whoso hearkeneth unto it, shall never find rest and never dwell quietly okay so this speaks for itself the power of the tongue is severe now jump to verse um let's read verse 17 and 18. verse 17 the stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones there you go the tongue your big mouth your reckless speech has the power to really destroy and break bones. Keep going. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So many have fallen by the edge of the sword. You know, you look through history, you can read about all the wars in these history books, but the Lord is saying that doesn't equate to the number that has fallen by reckless speech. Reckless speech, reckless speech. People not being able to control their tongue, their mouth. So, take heed to that. Now, jump to um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, and read verse, uh, let's get to the point, mm -mm -mm. 11. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 11. Start at 10. Verse 10. For the heir of jealousy heareth all things. Start, go up to 9. Read that. Verse 9. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. And the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. For the air of jealousy heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. So the Lord sees all of these things. He sees the murmurings, the jealousy, the reckless speech, the gossiping, the backbiting. He sees all of that. Read on. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and reframe your tongue from backbiting. 
For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. So that's the warning. Beware of your speech, because it will eventually catch up with you and slay your soul. So with that, we're going to leave it there. This is um, Captain Ashnell. Um, tune in for the next part. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.